All right, welcome to the meeting of the Board of Selectmen for <coughs> Monday, December 1st. Uh, the first item is to confirm our future meeting dates. We tentatively had a meeting scheduled for December 8th, but I understand we have to change that date. Um, so what about the 10th or the 11th? It suits Is it a Wednesday or a Thursday? Yeah. That's... Okay. Well, didn't you send a, a Monday out? Is that we can't do that one? You scheduled that at your last meeting, Monday, December 8th, because Tuesday, December 9th is the Conservation Commission meeting. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but now there's a conflict for Monday, December 8th. Uh, so what, let's see. So the 10th or the 11th? The 11th, or we could go into the following week. I could do the 11th. The 10th is the Curry College Neighborhood Meeting. I know. If I'd like to attend that. Yeah. Okay, the 11th. Or the 11th we could is do the Thursday. Monday the 15th, if that. 15th is good too. Not for either one of those nights. Uh, Should we try for the 11th? Uh, we have a lot. Yeah, of I've got nothing in the 11th, I guess. I could do the 11th. Okay, so let's pencil on the 11th. We do have a number of things. We've got town meeting articles that are, is the deadline is January 1st. Mm -hmm. So the question, I guess, is should we schedule a meeting for the following week? Probably, yeah. And if so, I'm pretty open the following week night. The 16th, I think, is the, there's a Board of Appeals hearing that night that we may mm -hmm. want to be at, which is Tuesday. But maybe, well, if we're meeting on the 11th, maybe we want to look at Wednesday the 17th or Thursday the 18th. How do those dates look? The 18th is fine with me. 18th? The Thursday? Now we'd be back to Thursday for December. Yeah. So the 11th and the 18th? We can't, can't do the Tuesday or no? Well, uh, it's the next Board of Appeals hearing on the 131 Elliott Street 40B. Okay. Uh, yeah, the 18th is fine, I guess. All right, let's, let's at least confirm the 11th and we'll for the 18th. That's good for you, Dennis. The 11th and the 18th? Yes. Yep. Okay. All right, the next item is approval of payroll and vendor warrants. Move approval of um, current payroll and vendor warrants. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Citizen speak. Do we have anyone here tonight for citizen speak? I'm seeing none. We will go on. Uh, the next item was a meeting with the Board of Assessors <coughs> regarding the tax rate setting, but I believe their meeting is still going on, so we'll move on to the next item, um, which is the FY15 Fire Department Education Incentive. I'll make a motion to approve the amount of $92,254 for the FY15 Fire Department Education Incentive, which reflects a total of 1,912 credits at $48.25 per credit. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, while we're waiting for the Board of Assessors, why don't we move on to budgets? And we can start with the first budget, is the Fire Department budget, and Chief Jack Brandt is here. So, Chief, if you'd like to come up and discuss your budget with us. Hi, Chief. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good, good. how are you doing? Good. Well, thanks for being here tonight, Chief. We wanted to um, get all the budgets on tonight so that we could get as many of them as possible downstairs to the Warren Committee for their start off their budget season for them. So we have your request. We have a, as you know, a level dollar request. We have a level service budget. And we have, again, this is a warrant committee request, a 2% deduction mm -hmm. budget. So each department is submitting three different numbers right. to us. And maybe you could, do you want to give us an introduction to your budget or bring uh, anything to our attention to start with? Yeah, uh, where do you, where would you like to start on that? Should we start with level of service? Well, top, or top to the bottom. Well, well, yeah, level service, Let's, I think. And then we'll go on to level dollar. Uh, in level service, um, we did uh, put in uh, one new lieutenant's position this year, which would be our training officer position. Uh, in addition to that, we uh, looking to have it completely representative of what our needs are. We upped the overtime uh, account to 400,000 from 300,000 where it currently sits. Uh, and we had an addition of uh, $10,000 to the training uh, account. 
and that, that really, you know, there was modest adjustments in general expenses, which uh, came to around $5,000, and that pretty much sums it up, uh, and the total uh, of uh, level service moving forward would be uh, 5086371 Under level service, Jack, why, why increase the overtime? Um. Uh, basically, as it was explained to us, that, that you did want it to be representative of what our costs truly are. Mm -hmm. And year to year, we're spending in that, in that range. Uh, so okay. in so, effect, we've been underfunded right. in that. So, so, so you're taking it from other line items? It's been taken from other line items, yes. OK. OK. Um, didn't I just see a spreadsheet on overtime, fire overtime? Uh, yes. And it has been going down, right? Yes. It, I, I'd say it goes up and down. <laughs> uh, and really, it all depends on what's going on across the street. Uh, you know, there, there's years we have, that we do very well injury and sick-wise, and there's years we don't. Yep, uh, yep. And, you know, it seems to stay within a, a certain swing, but, you know, it, it does fluctuate a bit. Mm hmm Okay. And in terms of new equipment, Jack, in the level service versus the level dollar budget? Mm -hmm. uh, in level service, uh, we've put a budget that's just uh, under $60,000, and that's itemized. And if we were to stay at uh, level dollar, we present down to $30,000 and we'd simply prioritize off of that list. <coughs> Maybe you could just speak to what the new lieutenant's position in the level service budget would entail. Mm -hmm. uh, when I, that goes back to actually when I first uh, came into the chief's position, uh, I saw the need probably within the first year that our training budget was going out just randomly. Uh, if there was a class going on that suited you know, you'd pick some people and, and send them out, they'd take the class. What I was finding at that point in time was that we weren't getting any value out of it. Uh, you know, certain in individuals would go out, get the training, but there was really no mechanism for them to come back and retrain. Uh, so that money was, you know, training a very small portion of the job. Uh, so what we did in the meantime, with this being kind of the final goal, uh, in the meantime, we took a, a lieutenant's position, uh, set forth a, a description of what we wanted from them, uh, gave it a stipend, and that position still works on a group as an emergency responder. Uh, so it's limited, he's got limited access to come in day to day and oversee the training. Uh, so what tends to happen is there's no uniformity, there's no oversight of that. So this is the next logical pro uh, progression to that, in which what we'd be doing would be creating a staff lieutenant's position where he worked a day shift and is actually physically here to run every training exercise, oversee it, and make sure the quality is there and make sure the uniformity is there. Uh, we're far better than we were. This will be the complete package. Okay. Any other questions or comments for the chief on the budget? Can you, <coughs> Jack, can you comment on the, um, the training that Fallon Amblin, Amblin's provides? Okay. Uh, yeah, Fallon's yeah. uh, comes over and does uh, continuing service uh, so that uh, the membership <coughs> can maintain their EMT status. Uh, matter of fact, he's over there tonight. Uh, they come in, I believe, once a month. Uh, at certain times of the year, they'll come in. They'll come in a little bit more for you uh, when hours are winding down, and you know they people need to get the training under their belt. Uh, but yeah, generally once a month throughout the year, they come in and do some training. I know Fallon pays for that, but do you know how much? Do you know how much it is? How much is saving the taxpayer? Uh, I wouldn't have a cost for that, to be honest with you. That'd be something they'd have to answer. Okay. Anything else for the chief? I'm good. Okay, I don't have anything either. So. Chief, Great. Thank you very much. Thanks, thank you for having me. We have a motion on the <laughs> chief's budget. Yeah. Um, um, Number seven. Yeah. Uh, I'll move to uh, approve and forward to the Warren Committee uh, the FY16 Fire Department budget in the amount of five million eighty-six, five million 
86,371 uh, level service, 4,825,346 level dollar. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Good night. Good night. <coughs> All right, the Board of Assessors has joined us, so we will move back to item five on our agenda, which is a public hearing with the Board of Assessors and our new Chief Appraiser. If you'd all like, to, whoever would like to come up and join us at the table, uh, all of you, we, we can just pull up a couple of chairs if you all want to come up and join us. You got us all. I think the public probably knows most of you except for Mr. Bushway, but why don't we let you introduce yourselves. Jim, if you want to start. Uh, my name is Jim Henderson. I'm uh, Chairman of the Board of Assessors. Bill Bennett, Member of the Board of Assessors. Brian Cronin, Member of the Board of Assessors. I'm Bob Bushway, Chief of President. Well, welcome to the meeting tonight. Thank you for joining us and welcome aboard. Bob, who's our Town of Milton's new Chief of Appraiser, who took over for Jeff Dambly, who retired after a lot of years of service. So we're here to talk about the classification of the taxes tonight and set the tax rate. And we have some information from you. Would, would you like to start us off, Jim? Uh, sure. The, the questions that we have, uh, the, the first one, I think, it would be the classification. And historically... Actually, we, one minute, Jim. I just want to... This is a public hearing, so we're officially convening a public hearing. And I neglected to mention that at the beginning. So. Um, and if we have anyone from the public who would like to address us tonight, uh, who might come in, we will, we will allow them an opportunity to be heard also. Thanks, Jim. Okay, I can start off and, and, I, and then can defer to, uh, to Bob, who uh, put all these numbers together. Uh, the main question we have here is the, uh, the, the rate shift. And historically, it's been kept at 150%. Uh, Going back to, I think, 2005, was it? Or was 2006? Seven years. Seven years. And <laughs> if we continue to do that, because of the dramatic increase in the single-family residential valuation going up about 9.5%, commercial going up roughly 4.6%, it would cause the result of that would be at 150 percent would be a shift to the residential that would be higher than the commercial. Actually, the average residential would go up about 2.12 percent and the commercial would go down about 2.5 percent. So we've discussed this as a board and I think our, re recommend, our recommendation is, is that we go to a shift of 157 uh, percent. And I thought historically that it has been at 150% forever, but going back to the records, we found that in 2008, it was 1.69, 2007, 1 1.83, 2006, 1 1.9, and 2005, 1.95. So there has been history for this, and our sense is that it would be more fair if both commercial and residential had a like increase in the uh, burden and the increase in the taxes. I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Bob, or? Uh, that sums it up pretty well. I think, um, you know, typically it seems like when the residential values go up, uh, almost double what the commercial average is, you want to try to level out that increase on the tax impact. So your commercial and residential class is on the tax and is going up approximately the same amount. So there's no, that's having a shift of a couple more percentages over on the commercial side kind of up levels out the playing field a little bit on that. So I think that's a direction that um, seems to make sense, but uh, this is Selectman's decision on this. So um, that's, that's what the Board of Assessors uh, Feels might, might be the fairest direction to go in. So you voted just to, for a, I want to just be clear, for a 157% shift, is that what you said, Jim? Yes. Is there any statutory yeah. maximum? Pardon? Is there any statutory maximum on the amount of shift? 175. 175, okay. Right. 
in, in layman's terms, can you explain what 157 percent, what does that mean? It, it just means that the uh, tax rate shift from the, commer from the residential to the commercial historically has been 150 percent. So whatever the rate is uh, for the residential, the commercial has been 150 percent higher. Okay. So with the increased valuations, at 157%, the rate for the residential would be 13.94, which is down from last year's 14.99. And for the uh, commercial would be 22.41, which is, would be down from 22.97 last year. So, so, but then you make it up in the, how do you make it up? How do you make up, when you decrease the percentage, how do you make up the, the gap? by increasing the assessments? No, you, you, if we stayed at 150%, the residential rate rather would be 13.98. So we're talking about four cents dropping in the, in the residential rate, which, well, actually works out to be a, a pretty significant amount of money. And the commercial rate would be 21.41. So with this shift from 150 to 157, the commercial rate would go from 2141 to 2241. If you think about it, this you, you basically have a tax levy. Okay, that tax levy gets spread out amongst all the property owners, commercial, residential, industrial, based upon the, the value, the relative values of of those properties. Right. Because the residential because the market value of the residential properties are increasing quicker than the commercial properties, you wind up taking more of that tax levy and giving it to the residential. And it's not like they're, they're necessarily new residences, it's just that the fair market value of those houses are going up quicker in value. So it's not like you're spreading it over more people. So effectively what happens is the um, property owner, the residential property owner, really gets more than a two and a half percent increase. Right. If you look at his last year's tax and this year's tax, mm -hmm. if you were stay at the 150. If I may, um, yes. one of the slides I put together was uh, showing the 10 year history of the average single family assessment. And you can see it has been going down with, when the market has been dipping, mm -hmm. but now we've got a spike from last year to this year. So this, that dramatic spike shifts more of the tax burden over to the residential class. So by shifting, by changing that shift ever so slightly, that levels out this big spike that you see on the average single family assessed value. Okay, so, <clears throat> so the average single family assessed value is higher today than it was at the, at the height of the boom in 06? Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's good news or bad news. <laughs> it's a pretty big increase from 2014. We went from the average family assessed value of 516 up to 565 this year. So it is a big jump. 9.5%. Yeah, the values have increased that much over the past year. Yeah. But it's roughly $15,000 over where the, what the valuation was in 2008. Actually, if anybody saw the, um, the newspaper on Sunday, do you see the, the sound? The dog? <laughs> <laughs> it says that Milton is actually in the uh, top 100 most expensive towns too. in the country. Well, the assessors gave us some additional information in the package showing that we are, I think it was 38th or 39th. The um, listing of the top tax bills. I think we were 39. Average, average, tax, average bill. tax bill. Mm -hmm. That was at a rate of 14.99. Right. So last year's single family tax rate 14.99. This year, it will be dropping. You know, over a dollar. Uh, you know, if you decide to go along with the 157 shift, the rate drops to 1394. So it's a significant drop on the, on the residential. Right. But the average value of the house 
Exactly. Increases. Yes. So. As long as the town budget continues to go up, mm -hmm. people are going to pay more property taxes. Right. right. So there's no decrease in payment for the for the taxpayer. Exactly. It's just the rate goes down, the value goes up. Exactly. Yeah. At 157, the uh, you, when you compare this year to last year, the average tax bill in fiscal 14 was seven thousand seven hundred and forty dollars. At 157, it would be seven thousand eight seventy nine. So it would be or, or, or seven thousand eighty eighty, I would say. So one hundred and forty one dollar increase. Uh, the commercial would go from fourteen thousand eight ninety two average tax bill up to fifteen thousand five eighty eight which would be a $313 increase. But the percentage increase would still be in line pretty close to 2% increase for both. Jim, could you, I'm sorry, could you give once again the residential increase, the dollar amount for the average increase? It went from 7880, I'm sorry, 7903, I'm rounding, to 7880. So the increase would be 141.27. But that's the decrease. Right? I think the first um, number was up. Last year. It's going up to 7.9. I'm sorry. Up to seven, nine. I'm sorry. So 7.880 eight, oh, to going up to 7.903. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. 7.740 seven, oh, to 7.903. Seven, 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 eight, oh. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and here again, rounding, $141 increase. I apologize for that. I was looking at the wrong number. Uh, commercial rate and, and commercial would be going from 15272 to 15588 which average. would be roughly average. average average which would be a $313 increase uh, we we did look at median using that but it would have resulted in a, a much higher shift and, and we just felt that the average would be <laughs> appropriate to, to do it at uh, 157 rather than uh, a much higher shift using median. Just out of curiosity, do, do we have any statistics in terms of on the commercial side how we compare with other South Shore towns in terms of commercial rates and our average commercial real estate tax bills? In, in other words, what, the, the impact on commerce in, in the town of, or potentially driving you know, businesses out of the town. Um, I think it's tough to judge that because we only have about three percent. I know it's small. It's, I know it's commercial and industrial right. property. So all you can really do is look at the average. Right, there aren't that many towns that have such a low number for commercial property. Right. So, mm. I, I know Braintree uses a uh, hundred and seventy-five percent split, and they've used that all along. Okay. So I, and I don't know what what you've seen in splits for the other towns around. Uh, if the shift is as high as uh, 1.75? Yeah, no, they're typically <coughs> in that range, you know, between 170 and 175. So, okay. you know, 157 is really Okay. All right. Framingham always maxes out, for example. Boston mm -hmm. maxes out, too, right? Yeah. yeah. The materials so. that you gave us had um, references to policy decisions needing to be made for exemptions, but if I remember the discussion from last year, and I may, I may not have it right, I think you'd recommended against that previously, and we've and the town has never done that. Correct. Yes. Right. Yeah. It's uh, whether it's commercial or residential. Right. Yeah, the residential exemption basically <coughs> is um, works fairly well for either a large city with a lot of rental properties, um, or uh, like on the Cape where they have a lot of rental properties and non-owner uh, non occupied properties. But in a town like Milton, it doesn't typically uh, make sense, doesn't line up too well. Uh, on the small commercial exemption, again, with only three, three and a half percent commercial, um, it's not the kind of community that would probably um, line up too well with that. Uh, uh, the, the other slight problem with the small commercial ex exemption is that the the break doesn't go to the small business, it goes to the real estate owner, and they may own a large block of properties, but the benefit goes to the owner and not, not the small business. So um, about 10 out of 351 cities and towns use that um, exemption. So I don't think Milton has ever 
to my knowledge, ever adopted that. The board's vote tonight would, would be no on both of those, the residential and the small commercial exemption. So since this is a public hearing, do we have anyone who would like to be heard on this matter? Now, seeing none, any other discussion? I'm fine. I'm good. good we then. have a draft motion. I know we're waiting for your recommendation, so we didn't have one prepared. Um, do we need to, to specifically include the rates in, in the motion? Yes, if you go to, if you go to this section here. The decision to be made under classification, and then just the residential factor will be the um, 13.94 for residential and 22.41 for commercial, and you are not going to adopt the residential exemption or the small commercial exemption. Yeah, just to get it in a motion without stumbling over ourselves. Is may, I, may I make a suggestion? Yes, Instead that of would be the, very helpful. The tax rate could actually ch ch you know, change a penny or two once you do all the calculations. So if you want to vote the, uh, the residential uh, factor of uh, 97.6867 translates into a shift of 157. So not to confuse the issue, but typically. So uh, what was that number again? Uh, 97.6867. That's the minimum residential factor, which translates into the 157 shift. OK. So that's Yes, I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Is that consistent rounding. with your vote this yes. evening? Okay, because we. So, why don't we entertain a motion to adopt a minimum resident rent residential factor of 97.6867% and to not adopt a residential exemption or a small, small commercial exemption? I move. Second. Second. Any discussion? Anything else that we should add to that motion, Bob? No. no? That's okay. Good. Then uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for Thank the you. public hearing. Thanks I'll for joining you. us tonight. You. All right, now we're back to budgets. Um, why don't we uh, skip over Conservation Commission for the moment. We'll go to Information Technology because we have Jim Scroy, our IT director here with us. and let's. Move on to IT next. Hi, Jim. If you'd like to come up and join Jim. us. How's everyone doing? Good. Good. Good evening. So, Jim, we have your budget. Would you like to say a few words? Sure. At the beginning, maybe just to talk about the level service versus the level dollar and any other information you might want to give with us. Give well, us. as far as if you, you look at the, uh, the cover sheet here, I mean, it worked out well separating it out by contractual obligations in, in general this year. Uh, so it, it sort of shows where we're going with this, that there's a tremendous amount of contracts that we have in place to keep mm -hmm. the system running uh, day to day as far as protecting the, uh, the infrastructure, the security. and. Uh, that that's basically what you're seeing here the 201455 and this coming year we've uh we've had a big hit in two areas um the um, phone system a lot of the equipment where it was a new new phone system was under uh warranty so as that equipment starts uh going out of the manufacturer's warranty we have to incorporate that in a contract and uh, that went up significantly. And the other area that we've gone up is uh, in uh, data storage and backup security. Uh, we've gone, <clears throat> excuse me, we've gone from uh, two terabytes of data to four terabytes of data that we uh, are allowed to store in our system. And that's a direct result of uh, GIS, uh, people scanning information into the computer. It, Basically, it, it goes somewhere, and that, that data has to be backed up, and then it goes off-site um, as, as, as a redundant backup. So in doing that, we've basically doubled the cost of that. Um, and uh, we've also done a, uh, a little consolidating here where 
the library, uh, they were due for replacing servers. All of their equipment over there was put in at the time of the, uh, the new construction. So I think that's like six years now. So uh, Will needed new servers. So what we did is we took, <clears throat> we took his servers and put them into our virtual environment. So it's not costing him anything as far as him going out and having to buy new servers. We incorporate it into our, our virtual environment. So that brings us up now to 15 servers that we have in our virtual environment. And all of those servers need to be uh, maintained and security-wise and so forth. So uh, those are two of the big uh, budget busters that uh, we have this year. And of, of course, sal salary has gone up. I have uh, the uh, uh, SEP increase for for Mr. Mallet and uh, the uh, contractual increases. Jim, what would happen if you had to take the 0.2% um, um, decrease? What it translates basically to is hardware, replacing, okay. replacing workstations, replacing our equipment. And um, that, that would basically be what would take the hit, is making equipment last longer, which Right now, uh, when we replace equipment, what we're hearing is people are, are, are reporting that, you know, the system's running slow. I can't get the data that I want as quick as I want it. And that, that's basically because the, the, the software bumps up, then you have to bump the hardware up I see. To, to offset the different changes. And um, So a decrease in your budget would? Would, would affect the would replacement affect of, of of workstations, and it, it would it would translate into you know slower, uh, as far as the the employees retrieving their data, doing their daily work. And the, the thing that I'm uh, we're, we're pushing for now is we're we're looking to replace our workstations with uh, solid state uh, hard drives in the computers. They're a little bit more money, roughly about a hundred dollars more but they have no moving parts. Mm -hmm. the, the, the solid state drive is like electronic. It's like a circuit board. Mm -hmm. So it's less likely to, to malfunction. Um, so that's what we're, we're trying to replace them with and we're trying to increase the memory that all these computers have. And uh, you know, with that, that's where we're headed. We've, we've basically we've eliminated all the XP machines. Now we're trying to work on the first level of Windows 7s that we uh, put into place three, four years ago. So, so that's Jim, basically, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. oh no, go ahead. Uh, so that's basically what would, what would uh, be affected is equipment. So Jim, your level dollar line is 408000 which is about $50,000 over what's appropriated this year. Correct. So it's... So it's an inc so even though it's level dollar, it's a higher number. It look, it looks as though that's just because that's the contractual amount for the for the next year that right. you're obligated to pay. Is, right. that, is there anything else, or does that account for the full fifty? It uh, well, the, um, if you look on the back sheet there, the uh, forty five seventy nine for salary and wages. Mm -hmm. so okay. It breaks down to forty six eight oh five. Okay. For the um, the rest of it. Okay, I thought that was in the level service, but okay. <coughs> All right, so that's in both because it's in a different line for mm -hmm. the FY fifteen budget. Okay, that makes sense. I'll Any move questions? to. Uh, I'll move it to approve and forward to the Warren Committee, the FY sixteen information technology budget in the amount of. $422,303, which is level service, and 408687 which is level dollar. Okay. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you, Jim. If, if, I want to side here. I just wanted to let you know that uh, we've had a, uh, a company, Chambers Advisory Group, that uh, contacted us basically a year or two ago. And what they do is they assess our uh, uh, phone uh, services, and uh, it's no cost to the to the town. The way they get paid is what they uh, they get in savings. They get half of it for a year, mm -hmm. and oh, they get the telephone bills themselves. Right. Yep. Yeah. So uh, so whatever is appropriated for for phone service, we don't go over that. It, it just stays the same. 
So what they've come up with is on the, on the town side, we're basically saving 460 a month, and on the police side, $196 a month. So what we're doing is half of that is going to them now, and then we're getting the other half in savings. So once that year is up, we'll get the whole 460 on the town side mm -hmm. and the 200 or 196 on the police side. Now those are savings on our, <coughs> our charges the, for voice the, over internet? No, 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 on the, on the, on the analog, analog on, the, okay. on the analog lines. Yeah, and, I was going to say. Yeah, and what it was too is there, there were a lot of lines out there that we didn't even realize we had okay. that were on the bills. And what he did is, uh, his company, they go out and they look at that bill. We, we, we gave them all of our invoices and then they went through it and they, they looked for uh, the charges and a lot of the categories we were getting getting charged way above what we should have been mm -hmm. on Centrex lines. There's different ways that the, the phone company categorizes the lines. And what they do is they then make the changes for us to get us the best savings. Mm -hmm. And uh, like sometimes when you dial nine to get out, that's a cheaper uh, service than to just dial direct. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they went through all of that and they came up with the savings. So I just thought I'd let you know that oh. You know, every little bit counts. Exactly. Jim, we should probably know, too, that the IT study is out for RFP right now. So yes. it's possible that, depending on where that's at in the spring, whether we've got a bid that's been accepted and mm -hmm. where that study might be, there, because there could potentially be some changes to this budget at a later date. Possibly. Possibly. Okay. All right. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Thanks Jim. Much. Yeah. Have a good night. Good night. I guess I really didn't focus on that before, but that was the Warren Committee's um, uh, charge to, to the department heads that contractuals would be funded in the level dollar budget. Yes. Okay, the next one is consolidated facilities. Our consolidated facilities director is here, Bill Ritchie. Bill, good evening. Good evening. Hi, Bill. Hi, Bill. So we have your budget, um, your level service and level dollar request, and like the others, would you like to start us off with some kind of an introduction to the budget? Yeah, well basically I submitted a, uh, a little narrative of where the department, how we began. You know, basically, uh, I'm in the job now just a little over three years, uh, basically, and I try to explain, you know, how big the department, as we started to grow, as we started out myself and hired an office assistant, and we finally now have like eight staff. Uh, basically oversee 925,000 square feet of space, almost a million, a million square feet of space, 22 buildings. Um, and the department's really growing now. Now that people know that we're actually out there, our work order system has just gone crazy. We, you know, we, we started out with uh, 100 work orders, over 4,000 with 200 back ordered. So as people know we're there now, it's, the workers are coming in. So it's a good thing, but it's a bad thing. <laughs> because sometimes you don't have the staff to, to kind of do it. You said 925,000 square feet? Uh, about 925,000 square feet. But 650 of that is the schools, right? A good, uh, about 680,000 square yeah. feet is the school department, okay. yes. But you know we're actually you know so and you know we, we we get involved we've you know we go down to the dog pound once in a while which is not even on the square footage because it's not it's a small little shelter but you know we spend a lot of time there we put last year we did a new roof we go over we try to kind of kind of work on the heat we, this year we did a small little walkway just to keep them up and running so you know we you know we we do get involved and you know and it, it's not that you're throwing you know good money into bad money but it's a it's a shelter that has to be maintained it's you know unfortunately you have to keep it safe yes um, and then I kind of listed in my in my report, you know, all the things, you know, what, you know, uh, how the department grew and how, you know, how we're trying to be proactive and do pre preventive maintenance, and you know, some of the effects that if we continue not to have a, a decent budget, then obviously some of the things are going to get kind of back ordered. But that's pretty much, you know. And I also listed in the back, you know, we've, you know, the the Wyoming committee has been very generous over the last year, you know, try, trying to give us extra money to, to fund the department, small projects. Some so one-time funding you're talking yeah, about, yes. Yeah, so I listed a bunch of projects. I mean, and there's many more, but I didn't, didn't want to overwhelm anyone. I could list 3,000 projects, but I, I wanted to pick, you know, last year they gave me $85,000, so I tried to pick, a, you know, a little, another budget number of some things that I wanted to do this year, which totals about $60,000 in one-time money. Because, they, you know, they're not really capitalized. Capitalized as a whole, but as, if you look at all the individual projects, they're under 10,000. 
And how are things working with your new painter with the hours? That must be a, a help, having someone yeah, well, yeah, we have the some, off hours. Yeah, he uh, pretty much works, you know, 75 to 80 percent of the time he's working off hours. He's very flexible. Obviously, sometimes if we have to get into a school building or a place during, you know, during the daytime when there's no school, so he's, he's pretty flexible. He'll, he'll, change his, uh, he'll, he'll change his shift around, you know, the kind of comment they need to the school, which is extremely helpful. Uh, and Zach's, he's in a couple, couple nights, we had a couple emergencies. He was already in town, so I didn't have to bring somebody in. He was already there, so it's nice to have that type of position off hours. Working out pretty good. Bill, are you almost at the end of hiring people for this department? Um, I, for the time being, yes. And I and, and, and I actually actually had the uh, this conversation with uh, you know uh, the town administrator not too long ago. I would love to continue to grow the department. There's a few there's a few more key positions I'd like to put into place, but not having a facilities department, there's really no place to put us. We really have a place to park our vehicles. Uh, we're working, you know, out of our trucks. We have stuff stored at the school department in different parts of the building, so it's really inefficient. Uh, so I would like to grow down the line, but so I'm kind of waiting to see what's going to happen with the DPW study. I know Joe Lynch is trying to do a study down there because we're looking at consolidated facilities, the park departments, probably all merging into one if, if, if possible. Uh, Bill, when, you, when the um, consolidated facilities were started, what was the first budget, can you remember? I think it was like 144,000. So, and how many years are we into it? Uh, just, uh, uh, just a little over three years. So we've gone from 140 to 900 and something, is it? Well, yeah. Well, it's actually a little less because we just we just put a couple of transfers. But yeah, that. But pretty much it was all staff. Right. I, I guess my question is, how much is this budget going to be in three more years? Are we looking at a $2 million budget? No, I think the last, you know, when we, when we did the uh, five-year projections, the last two staffing positions that we'd want to put in there, I'd love to see a, a, a licensed carpenter, yeah. craftsman in the department so we don't have to go outside and hire a contractor who can pull permits. Right now, all, all the permits are pulled by, I, I pull the permits under my license, but I'm not really doing the work, so I'm just trying to supervise it. I'd like to have somebody in-house that has that capabilities, and I would love, like to get another general maintenance person that could learn the trades of the electrician and heating, heating technicians for someone on the line so that person can kind of grow with the department. So when these people move on and retire, somebody else has, has that type of knowledge. I guess my question I would have, Bill, is if you had to keep the department the way it is now, yep. what would happen to our buildings in town in 10 years? Could you keep up with the maintenance? I, I could keep up with the general maintenance, but I make it very clear that we're not a capitalized department. We don't do capitalized projects. Yeah. So some of the, you know, obviously, can, can we maintain the schools? We can, we can do a good job, the schools, the public libraries, the COA, in, in the police department. But when you're looking at old fire stations, when you're looking at DPW yards, we cannot maintain them. We don't have that, the amount of staff that we need. We don't have backhoes and equipment. But for regular maintenance, you, you have the staff? I, I have the staff. I think the... The, the licensed craftsmen down the line will be enormous help. Yeah. It's just so no, there's no confusion out in TV land. Um, a lot of the employees in this department came from other departments. Not, I know you've got a couple of new positions in here. The painter is right. new. But, yeah. but some of these were, are, when the consolidated facilities was created, it, it's not as though we added $500,000 that wasn't already in the budget. We, sh we shifted employees and some costs from other departments into this new department. So, were, were they ever replaced in the other departments? Not no. I know of. No. Because this department is carrying on the, the no, functions yep. for the schools yeah. and for the town. Right. Yeah. The, uh, the when we started out, we had three transfers from the DPW yard. One was, you know, uh, yeah. uh, the, <clears throat> the, the the superintendent of buildings and grounds, and then we had two a W W three and a W four. That was they, that money was transferred to the department. So it didn't cost. It was already budgeted. And then just recently, we, we, you know, in the 16 budget, we're moving over the heating ventilation technician and the maintenance man. So five positions came from us that were already funded. That's a big chunk of money. So if you take off that five, it's, you know, about $400,000. Okay, well, that, short, make, yeah, that does it, make a difference. Yeah, it's, well, and Bill himself was with the school department for a number right, of yeah, years right. before six. coming yeah. into this and heading up this right. department. So. Yeah. Bill, in FY16, what, what is the one-time $60,000? Yeah, it's worth it. Yeah, and I, I had listed in the in the at the end of my report all the projects I like to do, but it's just uh, it's just l small little projects that are not funded in in the general budget. Okay. All right. 
the only other question I had, the, um, um, the HVAC tech and the uh, maintenance mechanic, those were transfers from the school in last fiscal year? Uh, no, they're not. They, they, they're still working. Yeah. Is that the one we've got the problem with? <clears throat> that is the one that was, uh, those two positions were negotiated to come over to this town side, but um, they cannot come over till fiscal year 16 because they were appropriated in town meetings voted okay. on them All right. in the school department budget in fiscal mm -hmm. 15. So gotcha. they'll be coming over to the in 16. town side in yeah. 16. Okay. Everyone in the school department, like the custodians and the maintenance technicians, they still report to us, but a lot of that all that funding is still handled by the school department in the 16 budget, the heating ventilation technician and the maintenance person in the overtime and uh, uniforms uh, allowance will be transferred into the department. Okay. It's Any kind of, you know, that's discussions or a motion? I think a motion to approve and forward to the Warren Committee the FY16 consolidated facilities budget in the amount of 951,254 level service. Eight hundred fifty-nine thousand two hundred and sixty-two level dollar. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Bill. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good thank job. Thank you. Keep on trucking, right? <laughs> That's right. <great. laughs> Thanks. Have a good night, Bill. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We the police chief is here, so let's move on to the police budget. Last. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening, Hi, Chief. Chief. Hey, Chief. Hope everyone had a nice Thanksgiving. You did. How about yes. yourself? Uneventful. We had a couple of things this weekend here, yeah, but no big problems. Good. All right. So we have your budget. Are you here to speak to the MEMA budget as well? Yes. I will. Yeah. I'll do okay. both. We'll start with I'll the police budget, the bigger one, and we'll go to the smaller one. What's the other one? MEMA. 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 Oh, yeah. Should have brought it in. <laughs> okay, so Chief, we, the department heads who have been in have been giving a little bit of an introduction to their budget and the level service versus the level dollar request. So if you want to start us off with any comments, you might want to so bring it, out. So this is my seventh year as Chief. Um, when I began in, nine, in 2007, uh, we had 56 offices. Uh, this year, we've finally got it back up with your help and the work of this board. We've gotten it up to 53. Um, we're a very busy community. In 10 years, we grew from 25,000 residents to 27,000. And if you just look at the issues that this board, as well as many other boards in town, have been dealing with, we're a community that continues to grow. Currently, you have proposals just for housing. Um, Sullivan's project, which is Milton Hill House 2, has just completed with multiple units there. You have a massive, what I call a massive, project before you at 131 LA, which would would bring 57 units to that busy area and that with all the issues that go on there. Um, you have the Meg Lane proposal, which has just gone from 72 to 90 units in their proposal. And as you know, you have other proposals that have floated around that people have come to us about Holland Street, Hillside, other places in, in town like that. Fortunately, you had the Muse, which will really would have changed the whole quality of character of that neighborhood up there, has been withdrawn, but that would have had a dramatic impact on the town. But all of these things do. Um, one of the things that, that I've said and I noted in, a, in my narrative to you is that the things that have really changed in Milton um, in the past few years and society as well and the issues that we deal with every day are reflective in much of this. We, we are a community which education is a big part of this town. Um, we have not only our public schools, we have two private high schools, Milton Academy and Fontbonne Academy. Curry College has grown into a city of its own. Um, we, we have a, an enrollment of between 11 and, 11 and 12,000 students and the issues just associated with school security and the, and the challenges for young people today draw an, an immense and a, a very large draw on the police department. We have a small community hospital that I'm sure that you sit on the board on that was just a very small little country hospital years ago that is now a very busy metro hospital. With the closing of Quincy City, the shift of workload from there is a great deal of it. We've already been made aware we'll come here to Milton. Um, issues of drug abuse, mental health are things that we deal with at Milton Hospital every day working with their staff. 
So those types of things, and as I say, those are things above and beyond just the general population. If you take the area of Fuller Village, which when I came on this job 30 years ago was just a big field, it's now one of the largest senior residences in the metropolitan Boston area. And that in itself draws a lot of resources in a different type of way. So the budget that I've given you, and as you all know better than I, I mean, two of you are both chairs of the Warren Committee, you understand this process full well. We've been through the level dollar exercise now for multiple years. It has allowed us to keep our heads afloat without having to have an override, which has really been the one thing in the history of since passage of Proposition 2.5 in 1980, it's been the one thing that's really kept our head above water is the successful overrides that we've had in this community. But from a policing perspective, we're at the point now where in this budget I've asked for two additional officers in my level service budget. Because even with that, it's just getting us back to where we were in 1992. And as I've said, you and I know just from the issues that we deal with every day, talking about not just the small things, but the bigger things that we get challenged with. And you saw on Saturday, we had to lock down a whole neighborhood in this community because we had an Ebola scare. And it happened just like that. And uh, fortunately, the training and preparation that had gone on amongst all of our public safety disciplines um, were able to screen this gentleman who had just returned from Africa very quickly get him into a major Boston hospital but make a quick determination that he was not a candidate for Ebola and, and bring that, bring the, the scare out of it and the fear out of it, bring that, that neighborhood back to you know, normal operations rather quickly. So those are the challenges that we have every day. Um, we do need to address this. I, I, I've said many times, I do believe in being a team player. We try to use whatever extra money that we have to keep our head above water. This year we used a lot of money. We, we were very tight in FY14. We used a lot of the money that we had excess at the end to help fund the pay raises that were negotiated at the end of 14 as we came into 15 and some of the steps and lanes and things like that. So um, I am very cognizant and I think you know that with, with being very diligent with the budget, but in this budget here, in the level dollar budget this year, we've asked for an increase of two additional officers. And I say, that Stoney brings us back to 55 officers. I mean, as you all know, and you were instrumental in the adding of the second SRO this past year to Milton High School in 14, is that the high school alone is a draw of two full-time police officers every single day. That's just for one school. That's not all the other things. The rest of the department takes care of most of the issues in the other schools. So. Those are some of the things and some of the demands that are placed upon us every day, and, and I won't even go near traffic tonight because Mr. Hurley and I can talk for two hours just about <laughs> traffic. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of where we are. And I, I know you'll have questions, so I'll be glad to ask any questions you have. Okay. Questions for the chief or comments? Um, just a couple of small ones first, uh, and, and I don't think it really makes any difference, but on your general expenses, are some of these really contractual as opposed to general, like the cleaning service, um, uh, equipment maintenance, heat, AC, is that, is that other yes. contracts? Yes. So what we do is we have contracts for, um, well, no, this is one good point that we don't have a contract for. Mr. Ritchie and I were just talking about this. Is One of the big things that you'll see, and I noted, I think, in one of the paragraphs, is that um, electricity the major utilities can kind of really hold us. Um, and so I know there's been some interest by the town. I mean, unfortunately, the windmill project did not go, and that would have been a big help to your annual municipal bill for all of us. But is the ability, I know Bill has been talking about purchasing from a solar farm where we can purchase collectively at a cheaper rate than I think the town splits now between direct energy and NSTAR. But things like my HVAC, um, the boilers, the maintenance, the generator, cleaning, all of that is all by contract. Okay. We do all that. Yeah, contract. and the only reason I bring it up is uh, because this year they, they, they split out contractuals from. Yes. And I don't, I don't think it makes a difference in yours because you've got the same number under, you know, um, level service, level uh, right. level, level service, dollar. Level dollar, correct. And uh, the only time it's different is the uh, you, you minus 2% Right. But there's, there's, there's a bunch of things there that probably should be moved down. I mean, it's just an exercise. Moving, you mean from line two to line three? Yeah, well, from, okay. from, from general expense down to contractual. I can do that. If you, want, if you have certain ones that you think you want me to try and do that, I'll Yeah, I mean, the, the ones that are, yeah, are clearly contracts. 
I, I yeah, the ones that are in here, by con I, I specifically had Ian list the ones that are contractual, so you, it was very clear and you would see that. Mm -hmm. I guess the, the, the other question is, um, technically gasoline's a contract, too. Yes, it is. Not my contract, though. That's, not, that's a town contract, yeah. not my contract. Yeah. I guess if you wanted, you could do an addendum, maybe, to it, if you want. I know, when do we have to get these to the Warren Committee? I know the, today's the deadline yesterday. That was discussed at the meeting, Mr. Hurley, and um, they didn't consider gasoline utilities contractual because we don't have a real number of an increase. So the Warren Committee didn't feel that those should go in the contractual line. No. Well, that, that, I mean, that one is. You, you have a set rate for, you do. for gasoline. That, that's truly a contract. I, I agree that the other utilities are not. Um, but you don't know how many tens you're going to fill up in the year, so it's, it's well, an estimate. So remember what yeah, you yeah. <laughs> So are you looking for that to be... Unless in, you want to park a car, you, you, you know how many times you're going to fill up. So are you suggesting you'd like to have gasoline in a, like a, in a contractual, like an exact... I could probably do that. I might be able to do that. The, the only reason I didn't is because that's not my, you know, as you know, that's a DPW town contract and we right. all... Right. And it's almost like the way we run it, it's exact... It, the deep dive is like mobile or shell. We're just buying from them. They tell you what the rate is. The difficulty is um, there's no fluctuation in the rate. That's that's the tough. Right. It's, it's the locked-in rate. That's, yeah, that's the locked-in rate. Yeah. That's the like right now. I, I don't. I'm not sure what it is, but the consumer is. I think maybe doing better than than we are right now because it just dropped so. so it just dropped so drastically. Yeah. You know. It's just, know. But you're right, Tom. It is the same. It's 135, right? For level dollar. Yeah. So, so, it, so it really doesn't make any difference. I don't no. think. No. And I don't think the chief was here earlier. I think the reason for that is that the Warren Committee has said that they will level dollar. They'll still they'll allow us to they'll allow a department head to state what's contractual. So that might bump the level dollar up over where the current year's appropriation is. Correct. But you have it the exact same number, so it's probably not an issue here. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. 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 You had a couple of other questions, Tom? Um, just um, overtime was the other question. Prepared for that one. That one I would. That's. I mean, that's the one big. It, it, it's you know we never budget what we actually spend if if you. And I just did a breakdown. If you look at just the overtime actuals going back to 10, the actuals were 429, 580, 597, 472, and 475. And the difficulty, especially when you're running with fewer police officers, then the only other way to adequately protect your community is through overtime. Mm -hmm. The second, and just as important, is that even though we run short, we're constantly faced with challenges. Like now we're in the holiday season, we're going to want extra patrols, and it, it, and I know members of yourself included, extra patrols in the business districts. Yep. You know, we, we put extra things on special events in town, special times of year, the warmer weather, clearly. Um, I, I know all of you, like myself, hear from parents, you know, alcohol is still the drug of choice in this community, and, and we constantly have to pay attention to alcohol in young people. And unfortunately, we also have to pay attention today to narcotics in young people. Maybe not as bad as some other communities, but we do. So that places the pressure on the overtime. The one thing we do is we watch it very closely. Every Friday, I get a breakdown of every dime that we're going to spend. And it's from there that, and I think we've gone through this in the past, that we've been able to plan out how to hold back real tight and go ahead. Because if if you look historically, I don't think I've ever come for a reserve fund transfer for overtime in seven years of a chief. So one way or the other, pull it back, whether you pull it back from training, whether you pull it back from other special, if you see the actual numbers of overtime, just take a five-year pick, they're all way above what's budgeted in, in, in both the level dollar and the level service budget. And I don't believe in the level service, I opt that any more than it was in, in the level dollar. Uh, no, it's the same in level it's service the same. and level, it's level the same. dollar, yeah. It's just, it's, it's up though from, yeah, because we had because the Warren Committee that was what so in the givebacks as you know when it's just that critical to our operation the two things we've fought for in the last three years and givebacks have only been two things overtime and gasoline fortunately this year in year three and I think the Warren Committee to their credit recognized it they upped that line item by thirty five thousand so we didn't have to fight for it this year shouldn't happen again mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. overtime I'm. I'm not going to say I'm comfortable, but I, 
I'm fully prepared to have to fight for that every year. I'm, I, I'm, I'm prepared to have to do that. Then try to, I'm not going to come in and say to give me 200,000 more. No, I'm just, I just don't think that's fair to the other departments as well. Chief, on Schedule B, this is, I think this must be one time, what's other available funds, but the deer, it looks like the deer money fluctuates year to year, and there's one called SETB. It looks like it was available so last year, but is that just a one-time? So SETB is, a, is our 911 money. That's our 911 money that we get to run 911. You pay. We don't, we use all of our 911 money to run our 911 system. Our upgrades, every single thing in that room comes out of that. That's a statewide Save the Telecommunications Board. The only sec is we break down training and just 911 operations. So SETB is, is 911 money just to run the 911 operation for the community. The training aspect that is to train our people, which we are required to do every single year. You know, for our cadets and our dispatchers who, as short as seven or eight years ago, came to work, we got them certified and they just, you know, went to work. They receive and are mandated to have in-service training every single year, just like our police officers. Are. So we use, we use those monies for both of them to run the 911 operation and to run uh, and to train all the personnel that work in there. So are those funds that come in every year? Every year, yeah. Those oh, are attached right. to the 25, I think it's, I think it's 25 cents per, every time you dial 411, there's a 25 cent assessment, and that funds statewide 911 in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little confused. Same question. I mean, that just shows 47,000 have expended, but no revenue and a deficit at the end. Because our money hadn't come in yet. Okay. I don't think I'm, it's a revolving fund. I don't believe the money had come in by the 31st. They're, they're not the best in, okay. in reimbursements. Okay. And I guess this isn't really a straight budget question, but a question that we like, Tom in particular likes to talk about, but I, I, I think there is a growing need for it. But in, this, in the summer, the bicycle patrols, especially in the square, but Foot patrols in the business districts, not just the square, but you know the Central Ave business district is a growing business district, and Absolutely. a lot more development down that area too. So, with the two new patrol positions, we don't. We'll see what the Warren Committee says in terms of funding. But would they allow you to do some more of these so foot you, patrols? So you're seeing a lot of it. You don't. I don't think you even realize if you notice a lot at night. Um, well, it was a lot until Conley's fenced off there. There. Uh, if you notice, most nights we had a cruiser there and an officer at that location, particularly in the rush hour. On the, on the Milton Village side, the car and the officer are in the parking lot of the Citizen Bank. They're in that area there. Um, I do concur with that. I, and as I've said, when we hired these last two, you'll see more of that. You'll see officers during the holiday period. We had officers in the square yesterday during the tree lighting. You know, yes. we, knew we had officers assigned to the square during the... Um, Merchants had quite a big event, which was actually bigger than we even expected. I think it was bigger than they expected. So those things you'll see. Y you are correct, and, and I think that when we were at both the meeting, when we were at the Milton Arts Center on the proposal for East Milton Square, and uh, a recent traffic commission meeting that we were present, and also the ZBA meeting where the colonies made their request where all the departments, Chief Grant and I spoke. You definitely see that um, Central Ave is definitely a growing, it's a busy area now. Yes. It's just, it's, it's definitely. East Milton, I think, I really do think that once you complete this deck project and get these additional spaces and get the lighting, the new traffic signals, I really think you're going to see a pretty big improvement there. Uh, you know, people, one of the truest things that was in the heart, the, how, is it Howard Stein Hudson report, was yeah. people want to see where they're, where they park, they want to be able to see where they're going to. You know, they don't want to park at, you know, Jack Rabbit to go to Stellar's. Now, they want to get, and that's, we always get a lot of pushback on the Brian Aff service zone parking because most of the people we make use it work can't see with it. And I think that when you put these new spaces in the heart of the square, you're going to see a big change. It's just, it's just going to, be a totally different positive that doesn't exist in that square right now. And you know, maybe 15 years from now, it won't be as effective as it's going to be in 2015. But I really think that um, it just those things show how much the square and the village and and uh, Central how vibrant they have become, and, and we're very much aware of that. And we have cameras on all of them now. We have, you know, we pay a lot of attention and resources to them. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess that, that aside, I mean, you know, the, you know, granted the specific times there is, but I, I think there's just something, um, there's something to having either bicycle or foot patrol on a regular basis, yeah. uh, as opposed to in a cruiser. Uh, it, it, it's just, it's just more impersonal in a cruiser. It's more, you know, it's, it's just that f the friendliness factor, the just everything else that goes along with having a, 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 a patrol officer on foot or in, you know, just I, th I think makes the business area that much better. And oh, Regardless of cameras. Ticketing cars that need to be ticketed for parking or, it, I watched the tape of the ZBA hearing on the Falcone restaurant and it sounded like a lot of the resident complaints were about existing conditions, about parking and trucks going down small streets and blocking traffic. Well, cl so, cl clearly parking ticket revenue is down. Um, yeah, it, it's been consistently down. And, and rightly so, I mean, you know, I understand it's a manpower right. issue, yeah. but, but clearly it is. It's not because people all right. of a sudden are, are being really good about not illegally parking. Um, I think, too, is, and this may have been even as long as four years ago, you know, we were really targeting East Milton very aggressively to the point that the chamber came before the board and we, we kind of agreed to, um, particularly in the evenings, although this, I don't know how long this is going to be able to do this because the evening is, you're getting a nightlife there now. We, we, we historically have kind of like, mm -hmm. after four or five o'clock, um, relax things a little bit, but parking is going, you know, with the nightlife, I agree with that. And, and I want to go back to what you said about I agree 110 percent what you said about you know the officer on foot the officer I mean if if there's one thing I I believe two things very wholeheartedly about this police department is the partnerships we have not just the schools the neighbors the business district is just as important the, you, mm -hmm. know, you know people having a face and a name and knowing where they are I agree 100 um, percent you know there was a time when we f first went into this community policing philosophy Larry Lundgren walked Central Ave Business District every night it was his, it was his, and then unfortunately, with it, it's like you circle the wagons because you're trying to survive. But I do promise you, I will work on that. I do um, it may not be seven days a week, but I think that we can do it um, for good part of the important part. You know, week weekends weekends especially are very. You know, Thursday to Sunday in the square is different than Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's it's mm -hmm. it's very, um, and and the enforcement aspect of it, I do still want to come back to you. I want to wait until um, the square is closer to its fruition, but I do think that from an enforcement perspective, both not just the revenue, but for parking turnover, that we begin with the pay stations in those two new lots in the square and any parking that may go into, if, if should any parking ever go into either Milton Village or Central or Business District that is the property of this you know, the town, mm -hmm. that we should, everyone's done, I mean, the town of Brooklyn just did their whole town, we, Dedham's done their whole town, we should, we should definitely start to work at making that investment and doing that. And, and that's just a small baby step to start. And I think if we started at its inception, it would be embraced a lot better. I mean, the parking meters, you know? They're not meters, they're pay stations. Pay stations. Pay stations. Yeah. Pay stations. So you have a number on the, on the, um, you, either have, you can all, you can do it by your cell phone, it's, it's just. I think it's a good um, system it's, in It's Dedham. a good system. It is. It's very good, and I think that that can help with that. And, and going back to what you said, having an officer who's there that they know who that name of face is all the time, who, you know, can go in and say, hey, look, at, you know, here's what we have to do today. Here's a, being more of their partner in it than just the, the radio car showing up. Right. I, I agree with that. You know, and you, 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 I, I've said it before, even if we, um, if we took all of that increased revenue and just put it back into improvements in the, in the three commercial districts. I agree. Um, it would go a long way. Okay, any other questions or comments for the Chief on the Budget? Anything else you want to add, Chief? No, I thank you. And, and, and I just want to say, you know, I, I, um, I thank you, all of you on the boards that have been here before for their support. But I, I do want to say this, and this has been a very tumultuous week for law enforcement in this country. And um, I went to a mass at St. Pius the Tenth at 4 o'clock on Sunday a church I've never been inside my entire life it was just a fook. I'm sorry. <laughs> Your neighborhood's not in a high float. <laughs> I just, I just went there, and uh, as I was sitting in the church, a priest who I did not know, and I know him only by name, 
as he went into his homily, he said, the first word out of his mouth was Ferguson, Missouri. And for a second, just as a policeman, following this and listening to it and understanding just how difficult things can be, and I thought to myself, wow, is he going? You could hear like a hush went like right through the church. And he talked a great deal about his own upbringing, growing up during busing. Like, uh, you know, I, I went to school here, but I had many friends from South Boston and Mattapan and Dutchester who were bussed, and I understood what it was like, and uh, Anne Marie knows what it was like growing up in Dutchester. Um, those were different times. We were a different city back then. And he talked about how being part of the solution, not being part of the problem. And he talked a great deal more about it than that. But then this afternoon I received a phone call from an attorney, a female attorney in town who's known by everyone in this room, very politically involved, and she wanted to talk to me about it. And she asked me a little bit about some of the training and some of the things that we do here. And I said, don't think as police chief that, especially because we have a very diverse community. We live in a very diverse community, and as for all the good things, we're not immune to violent crime. It could happen just as it could happen anywhere else. But I've always said since the first day that I came in here to be interviewed to be chief to the night that I was appointed chief, and from a philosophical approach, I believe very strongly that we should communicate our issues versus litigate them. And we will be much better as a police department being a part of this community versus a part from this community. And I think that for all the things that have happened here, all the things that the boards and the committees have, and, and the warrant committees and each member of the board of selectmen that sat on this room, have supported not just for me as chief, but for the chiefs before me, the citizens of this town received the benefit of that because we truly have a police department that is truly engaged with the community. And it's not to say that something bad might not happen tomorrow, but I leave you with this closing analogy that I took from uh, the pilot, Sully, who flew the plane into the Hudson. And when he talked about it, he talked about his whole piloting career. And he said that every day he went to training, every day he went to work, every time he embraced being a commercial airline pilot in the United States, he viewed everything that improved his ability as a savings account. And that he'd make a deposit every single time into that savings account. And one day, something might, bad might really happen, and he would make that one massive withdrawal to hopefully preserve his life, which is what he did the day the engines failed in that plane, and he landed into the Hudson without a single loss of life. So I can't guarantee you that, but I can guarantee, tell you this, that in, even today, officers have been out the range, <coughs> going through all types of drills and exercises. It's a, it's a biannual thing. It's not a, it was very cold last week when they were out there. Um, you can tell how the instructors, how much emphasis they place on the use of force in an American society. The equipment and the weapons that we use is but as important as escalation and de-escalation, things of that nature. But we are very fortunate in that we have men and women who every day make huge decisions in this community, probably bigger decisions than anybody else because they affect human life. And I think all of us are the benefit. And you as the appointing authority for the police department are the ones who start that ball on. You know, the ball ends and stops with you. So I thank all of you for that and have a good holiday season. Thank you. Are you going to stay around for one oh, minute? I am Lima. I don't know anything about that budget. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's at least get a motion on the police budget. Okay. I don't think we've made um, that yet. Move to approve and forward to the Warren Committee the FY16 Police Department budget in the amount of $6,957,511, level of service, $6,828,165, Thousand one hundred sixty-five, which is level dollar. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Um, MEMA is a pretty small budget. I don't know if we really need you to stay here for that, but I heard that you might be here to answer any questions. So, does anyone have any no questions. comments or questions on the? And for the benefit of the people watching, MEMA is the Milton Emergency Management Association. It's the auxiliary fire and the auxiliary the police. police. Who do you know a credible job? You know you have to give credit to anyone who go out and volunteer their time. And um, even though I, the auxiliary police comes under me, I always uh, I can't go without singling out the members of the auxiliary fire as well because they support us in so many not just civic events but major crime scenes, things, fatal accidents. They come out on the worst of the worst for us, and uh, we're very grateful to all that they do for us each year. And if you look at the budget, Mark Williams is listed as having. He's the MEMA director, but he's been a volunteer since 1974. That's true. MEMA, so that's, that's a lot of years of volunteer service for the town. I'll be, to be honest with, between the, the two of them, both John Fleming and yes. Mark Williams, you'll be hard pressed to find you know, community with that type of 
I mean, John Fleming, I, he's in his 70s. I didn't even realize he was that old. I mean, he's, he's been doing this for his whole, two of them, Mark Williams was doing when I was in high school. So it's, yeah, uh, Mark and John are, are dedicated mm. community volunteers, that's for sure. So we have a request for a level dollar and level service for them, which is the same amount of each because this is right. $10,615. This is a very small budget that pays for some expenses for the volunteer firefighters and volu volunteer police. Yeah, I'll uh, move to approve and forward to the Warren Committee the FY16 NEMA budget in the amount of uh, $10,615. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Okay, I think we skipped over a couple of budgets. Let's just uh, conservation. conservation commission. Twenty. I'll move to approve and forward to the Warren Committee the FY16 Conservation Commission budget in the amount of three thousand dollars. Level service twenty five hundred level dollar. Uh, second. Discussion. I do have a little question. Let's hang on one second. Um, Um, that's fine. I get no questions. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. We have the law budget. Move to approve and forward to the wiring committee the FY16 law budget in the amount of $289,000, which is level service, $261,000, which is level dollar. Second. Any discussion? Aye. I just need an explanation on um, the difference between level dollar and level service in a law budget. The increase in the level services for the professional and special services, what I did was I took a five-year average of what we've spent, and that's the 225000 that I put in the level service budget. And then the level dollar budget, I just carried what we got the year before, which is 197000 uh, I can get a word of that. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's... It, but it's an anomaly because really you, you, there is no such thing as level service and level dollars in a contractual a, budget. It's a like contractual this. budget. So you, what you, I do, you pay the bill when it comes in. Yeah. So what, and usually if we're underfunded, we go to the reserve fund at the end of the fiscal year because right. it's, a, it's a budget that, that's fluid. You don't know what you're going to spend mm -hmm. each year. So what I did for the level service budget is I took the last five years' appropriations and I averaged it out, and it was 225000 so that's what I put in for the level service number. And the level dollar number, I just put in what was appropriated for f fiscal 15. But Tom's absolutely correct. It's, it's a contractual obligation budget, but historically... Historically, the Warren, Committee, the Warren has, Committee has... has historically, the Warren Committee, and we came to an agreement a number of years ago mm -hmm. to use a rolling average, mm -hmm. and, and then somehow with, with the, the level, level dollar budget, it, it's gotten forgotten about, but it's... It's going to come out one place or another. You know, it's I understand, but has there been transfers over the last number of years? Yes. yes. With the law budget? Mm -hmm. At the end, in June, you always do transfers. Do they ever come in under what's appropriated? No. No. No, in fiscal year 14, we did a $22,000 reserve fund transfer. So they put this budget together, right? In Marie's no, I put, you this put budget, the budget together. I put this budget together. Are they aware of what this budget is? The company yes. that represents the town? Yes. Mm -hmm. The retainer. They get a there. copy of this budget. Once you approve and sign it this evening, mm -hmm. a copy of this budget goes to Murphy Hester and Lehan. But you've got little control over lawsuits and... Yeah, you just don't. No, understood, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of lawsuits going on at the moment. I mean, there's, but we, they did hold, for fiscal year 16, they did hold their pricing. They didn't increase... Anything, so. Yeah, they're not it's seeking a re an increase in the hourly rates, but yeah, the retainer has also stayed the, same. stayed the same. I think it's important for the public to know, though, that it does cost a lot of money legally mm -hmm. to represent this town. Absolutely. You know, between lawsuits that people don't even know about, and um, one lawsuit can cost you a couple hundred grand. Mm -hmm. in, in legal fees, sure. Well, on the back a couple of pages actually have the budget history going back to 1997, so it's, uh, it's yeah. varied quite a bit. Obviously, it just depends on what's going on in a given year. And you get a breakdown every time an invoice is mm -hmm. sent in? Yeah. Yes. I'll make a motion to... Uh, do we already do it? You do. We do, yeah. 
Is it seconded? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Any discussion <coughs> on the motion? And if not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay. We have general insurance. General insurance is another contractual obligation budget, and um, this is for your um, workers' comp, your multi peril, um, your liability insurance is for your elected officials, your law enforcement, your school board, and for the um, fire and police injured on duty. Question uh, on the multi peril policy. Uh, the actual came out of 273000 in FY14. Mm -hmm. um, do, we, do we know where it's going to come in? Or do we have a feeling of where it's going to come in in 15? And why are we budgeting 340? So we're significantly up from the actual of FY14. What's changed? Because we, um, we have to budget for what is anticipated to be the cost. However, um, we <coughs> those the credits the credits that I do for the loss control credit program mm -hmm. um, that doesn't come in till the next fiscal year for the previous year's program. Okay. So I have to budget that way. Okay. But we, are, but we honestly think there's going to be a forty thousand dollar increase in the multi peril, and we haven't added any new buildings. Um, but that's also um, accidents. Sure, it's liability, yes. Um, hmm. And it goes on your prior three-year history. And um, we had one good year that dropped off, and we picked up a year that we had some, um, some increases. Okay. All right, and, and that's, a, that's a number that comes from Cook & Company in terms of the estimate? The, um, the police and fire? No, no, I'm talking about the multi peril No, that's Maya. Massachusetts into local insurance association. Okay, but but how do we get how do we get the three hundred and forty thousand dollars? <coughs> Massachusetts into local so insurance. So Meyer is actually saying mm -hmm. you should budget this. That's right. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion, or would someone like to make a motion? A motion to approve and forward to the Warren Committee the FY sixteen general insurance budget in the amount of one million nine thousand nine hundred thirty two dollars. Uh, second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I did have one other question. I just noticed it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the all other line. Mm -hmm. What happened in FY14? We had some um, heavy um, deductibles for um, some police matters. We had some SOAR backups that we have to pay twenty five hundred dollars. No, it's, I mean two hundred and fifty thousand compared to sixty thousand. I mean what? Something spiked it, and I mean hugely spiked it. FY fourteen. Uh, oh no, that two hundred and fifty is is an encumbered amount. We encumber that each year, in case any of the lawsuits are, that are filed are not covered by Maya. Okay. And we have one outstanding now that's not covered by Maya, so we always. Historically, have carried over two hundred and fifty each year, in order to pay those. Okay. Um, so, so the two hundred and fifty was incumbent in fourteen, just hasn't been used, so it just keeps getting just, carried forward. It just keeps getting carried forward. Okay. Again, in case we have any lawsuits. So, presumably, that two hundred and fifty was used prior to fourteen to have it built back up, or. No, it's always been there each year, it, and it, it sometimes well, well, no, will weigh up it, it and weigh down. It was added in 14. It had to have been because it's budget, it, it's, it's appropriated in 14. It was encumbered from 13 into 14, and then it was encumbered from 14 into 15. It's an encumbered amount. Right, but why am I seeing a spike in 14? It goes from, the, the original budget was 60. Budget adjustment was 250 to make it 310. Mm -hmm. um, Are you looking at Schedule E? Because that's all blacked out. Yeah, on. Schedule E. You have it in Excel. Right. I have the PDF. So I. Can yeah, you tell us what the numbers are? I think Dennis and I just have the PDF. So what were the numbers? Right, right there. So in, in. It was originally budgeted in FY14 at 60. Mm -hmm. It was a budget adjustment of 250,000. Was the encumbered from fiscal year 13? Right, to, to get the 310. Ten. And expended was 74. So three, 235 mm -hmm. was the balance left. Yeah. That with some other 
money was then brought up to 250 again and it was encumbered into 15. Okay. But I guess, I guess what I'm saying is in order to get this 250 incumbent amount, mm -hmm. if it's something we've always been doing mm -hmm. and hadn't ever used, then why do we need to encumber it in 14? Well, well, we do use it periodically, but I always keep it, have always kept it at the 250. That's been historic, and it's been because of the savings in my participation credits, um, dividend credits, the loss control credit program. It always keeps it at the 250 that continues to revolve forward each year. Right, but we actually appropriated 250 and 14, which... So you're asking why is that number 60 rather than well, 60 no, plus 250? Well, I'm asking if, if the 250's always been there and just keeps getting rolled, yes. then, then why, did, why did 250 come in in 14 if it, it was didn't already come in, there? It's, in, it's encumbered. It didn't come in. in what you appropriated in 14 was 950,647 in the budget. The 250 is just encumbered from the prior year. Okay, and that's just because it's showing up as a budget. So, so it just shows as a budget adjustment because of the way we did the budgets this year. Historically, you've never seen that 250 carried forward unless you went to page two, yeah, where I it know. says encumbered 250. That's where you would see it each year. So is this just a new column that the Warren Committee added? Yes, yeah, okay. it's the new way we set up the budgets. You would have never, you have never seen that term on the front page. But you didn't appropriate an additional 250. It's just an encumbered amount that's carried forward each year yeah. in the event of lawsuits that are uncovered by. No, I understand what the encumbered is. Yes. Um, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So we've already voted that. So we're on to selectmen's E and R. The amount of 55,100. And it's less than, and again, this is another contractual budget, and it's less than fiscal 15 uh, because we don't have a fall election. Mm -hmm. We had a state primary, uh, September state primary. In this mm -hmm. fiscal year, we don't have that in 16. We just have the October fall town meeting, the March presidential primary, and the annual town meeting. Right. Now, I remember we talked, was it about a year ago, about possibly rolling this into the town clerk's budget? Is this the line item? Mm hmm We did. And then it was decided that she broke out her budget to show what was truly um, election and registration costs and, town, and th separate was town clerk to run her town clerk department. And that's how um, we ended up doing it last year. So in the future, is this something we would want to move into the town clerk's budget rather than the selectman's budget? It makes more sense to be there. But... I couldn't remember we'll where we left it. I think there was a discussion with the Warren Committee, wasn't there? Didn't they have a preference? I don't recall what it was, but... I thought there was some discussion about this last year. Well, in any event, regardless of where it is, the number is based on the elections. Right. Move to approve and forward to the Warren Committee the FY Selectman's E&R budget in the amount of 55100 Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we also have Veteran Services. That's our last budget for tonight. Uh, there was that one request of the cemetery to move <coughs> flags into their budget from this budget. Has that been done? Not that I know of. No. You're talking about what Bob Mason referenced at the Veterans Day Parade. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know. I don't know if anyone no one mentioned that, too. I, I know I didn't. I, I did. I forgot about it. Um, you didn't mention it. I'm, I mentioned it to somebody. Um, um, I remember the flags in this budget. Bob Mason is a cemetery trustee, and he did ask at the Veterans Day Parade that um, so possibly always, the flags it's, it's could always, be moved uh, into the cemetery the budget. The money for them. Um, so it, they're always late, and they're always. So can I understand it correctly that they have a, an appropriation in the cemetery budget for flags, and you want me to take no, that amount? No, they, they do not there? right now, but they would rather have it in their budget so that they can... Yeah, I don't see it in this veteran's no, if I budget. Buried. Is this where it was? Both general expenses? Let's check general expenses. I don't know if the cemetery submitted an official request. They probably didn't, but it was. I mean, not to... Uh... Unless it's in that miscellaneous amount. It's probably in yeah, the could be. line. I'll follow up with the cemetery okay. superintendent tomorrow. 
I forgot about that until you just mentioned it, Tom. So we have a request for the same amount, level service, level dollar, 182158 And again, as you know, we get 75% reimbursement yes, for the correct. veterans' benefits. Okay, I'll move to um, approve and forward to the Warren Committee. The Warren Committee can always make the change, I suppose. Second. Uh, I don't think we made the motion yet, but uh, to approve and forward to the Warren Committee the FY16 uh, veteran service budget in the amount of 182,158 level service, 182,158 level dollar. I'll second that motion. Any discussion? Uh, other than just, I guess, inform Absolutely. the Warren Committee that, um, you know, it may be changing slightly. Mm -hmm. yep. I follow up with the superintendent. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Unanimous. So we still have the selectman's budget to submit at our, that'll be at our next meeting? That's correct. Are there any others that are outstanding? Have we now covered all of the ones that are under our jurisdiction? You have the DPW. DPW, right. You have the uh, Central Business Office. You have Selectman. And I Those three. Will all and of them group be insurance. Okay. Will all of them be on for we the didn't next see meeting? CBO yeah. when we here? did, but it had to be deferred for some at the prior meeting for some follow-up. Okay. Okay, so CBO, DPW, and our budget. And group and insurance. insurance. So will we have all of them on? On your December on the 11th? 8th, yes. Yeah, which we've now moved oh, to now, December which 11th. Which we've now moved to December 11th. Mm. Okay. All right, then we are on now to the bid acceptance for the annual town reports and warrants. So we, had a, we have a motion to approve a bid. Motion to accept a three-year bid from J&R Graphics. Uh, the printing and binding of the annual town reports and town warrants. Uh, I will second. And according to the information we have from Mrs. Rizzi, but that was our only bidder. Yes. And we've worked with them for a lot of years, so yes. they do a good job. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, on to number nine, which is the 2015 Common Vittler's License Renewals. Make a motion to approve the following 2014 Common Victualler License Renewals. And I guess that should say 2015. 2015. Radio Coffee House, 24 Central Ave. Milton Youth Hockey, Yulin Rink, Newcomb Farms, 1130 Randolph Ave. Lethy LLC, New England, doing business as Brugger's Bagel Bakery, 360 Granite Ave. Abdel Ghani Sanusi, doing business as Zach's Pizza and Wings, 538B Adams Street. Hojarn Inc., doing business as Mr. Chan's, 534 Adam Street. Janice Place 2, doing business as JCI Houghton's Pond Concession. Tino's Pizza, 2 Central Avenue. Stella's Luncheonette, 558 Adam Street. Starbucks Coffee, 552 Adam Street. Milt Dunn LLC, doing business as Dunkin' Donuts, 545 Adam Street. B and D Ichiro Inc. doing business as Ichiro Sushi, 538A Adam Street. Spellbound Inc. doing business as Milton House of Pizza, 537. How do you pronounce that? Twigo Management LLC doing business as G H Bent and Company, 7 Pleasant Street. Welch Restaurant Management LLC. DBA Abbey Park, 550 Adams Street. Milton Fuller Housing Corp. doing business as Fuller Village, 1372 Brush Hill Road. Milton Fuller Housing Corp. DBA Fuller Village, 1399 Blue Hill Avenue. The Plate, 27 Central Avenue. Milton's Opus LLC, DBA Steel and Rye Restaurant, 95 Elliott Street. Uh, second, but I do have a couple of questions. Um, why uh, Milton Youth Hockey is not running the um, concession stand any longer, so why are we issuing them a common victuals license? 
Mm. That should not be there. It's an error. And the second one is, uh, in terms of the plate, are those licenses issued by address because they have a new location in? They won't have. Won't be open until the next year. They will. Next year. They, they to, might have to apply for the new location. Okay. Yeah, they They're reply. not open yet? Nope. Okay. So should we offer a friendly amendment to delete Milton Youth Hockey at Yule and Rink? You'll accept the I'll accept amendment? that. Okay. It's good catch. And just for the benefit of the people who are, might be watching, what is the fee on these licenses and, the and what are the requirements to get the license renewed every year? The fee is $75. It was increased in around 2005. It used to be $25. Um, and the, we have an application that the um, business owner will come in and fill out. And then we um, work with the town treasurer and the Board of Health to make sure that their taxes are paid and their food licenses are all okay, um, up to date. Okay. Then if no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 And I'm assuming the liquor licenses are coming up soon. On the 8th. On the, on the 11th. On the 11th. So I got the 8th in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we have some executive session meeting minutes to release. Um, is this the correct motion? Yes. Okay, uh, where is that? Um, Number I'll 10. move to uh, release uh, to the public the following executive session uh, meeting minutes 2012, August 23rd, 2012, uh, items 1 and 2 withheld, uh, 2013, uh, January 10th, 24th. Item 2 withheld, February 7th, item 2 and 3 withheld, February 28th, item 1 withheld, March 1st, item 1 and 2 withheld, March 7th, item 1 withheld, March 21st, item 2 and 3 withheld, 2013. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 We're slowly making our way through those. We'll have more in the next couple of meetings to go through and release. Okay, uh, boards and committee appointments. I'll move to approve the reappointments of the following members of the Conservation Commission. Judith Darrell Kemp and Michael Blute to serve through May 2017. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. And thank them for their service. They do a good job. Okay, we have uh, a motion to approve income from the Mary L. Peabody Fund for Christmas gifts. Uh, okay, I'll uh, move to uh, approve a grant in the amount of $200 from the Mary L. Peabody Fund for the purchase of Christmas gifts for needy Milton residents. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Next item is the Quincy Home Consortium Mutual Cooperation Agreement. And we have a recommendation from the planning director that we extend this agreement. I'll move to approve participation in the Quincy Home Consortium Mutual cooperation agreement with Quincy, Holbrook, Braintree, and Weymouth through June 30th, 2018. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Town Administrator's report. Um, the only thing I want to report, Madam Chair, is the um, tree lighting ceremony last evening, which we all attended um, at 4.30 in East Milton, which was very nice. It was... Um, very nice. It was a beautiful evening. Um, it was warm. Yes. Mm, for change. A lot of little children. And so happy to see Santa Claus come across the street ringing his bell. So it was, it was very nice. It was a good effort by the merchants in the business district. Absolutely. I have nothing to report under the chair's report. Does anyone have anything to report tonight? No, I just I mentioned earlier about the, the Globe South on Sunday. It was a very good article on the priciest home markets in the United States, and actually Milton is in the top 100. Mm. Uh, priciest towns in the country. Which is, is good for... It says a lot for our schools and our police department and our fire department. It does, and, and, and it's, it's good for the people that, that own homes. Uh, you know, you're going unfortunately, to make very home. difficult for the people that need to move into the town because it's right. very mm -hmm. expensive. It is. It is. Well, we're, we're making some strides in our affordable housing with our getting our plan in place and looking to fund our trust in the spring. So. More, more to come on that. Anything else? Anyone? To, anything to report? Citizens speak response. Future agenda items. We do need to.
put the financial forecast at some point. Probably, I think we're looking at early looking January, at January at this point. The school mm -hmm. committee is taking a review of it. And um, other items for future agendas? Just ones we know about, Swift hat. And yes. Um, Town meeting articles. I yeah. think um, sometime in the next few months, we should talk about the um, windmill or the turb wind turbine and update the town where we are and what we're going to, how we're going to move forward. And proceed resolve it once and for all. And mm -hmm. resolve it once and for all, like you said, Tom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. We should. Uh, anything else? Then I will move that we enter executive session to discuss the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property, zero Central Avenue believing that having this discussion in open session would have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the body and to return to open session to adjourn. Second. Mr. Cohane. Yes. Mr. Hurley. Yes. And yes. So now we're in executive session. Thank you.